TVC News, first with Brooklyn. And welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigerians' leading initiative in the business of brand management and the management of brand to business. It is a 30 minute wholesome package that comprises brand news, branding focus, and industry conversation, all in a mix encompassing thorough and in depth all aimed at promoting the brand idea. I'm Ogali Abikele Mafru. Keep up with innovative, revealing, and groundbreaking happenings in the world of brands and brand builders in Nigeria and across the globe. Mingle with people and brands that make the cut and the personalities that keep reinventing the trends and traditions in the marketing world. All an exciting one-stop shop for marketing vibes. Marketing Edge on TV. You are always right on time with the right people and movers and shakers of the world of marketing as they share their views and ideas on the business and challenges of advertising, corporate affairs, media strategy, and the unfolding exciting world of digital marketing. Join the trendsetters and key decision makers as they shape opinions and project into the future of the marketing landscape for 30 exhilarating minutes on this channel. Stay ahead, be thrilled to beat, be marketing savvy with Marketing Edge on TV. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. Good to have you back. First on Marketing Edge on TV is Brand News, where we bring you the latest developments around brands and in the field of advertising, marketing and communication in Nigeria and around the globe. Now on brand news. As part of efforts to a rather dynamic shift in the advertising industry, the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria, Alcon, has unveiled a new logo to reflect its new identity and mandates to reposition the industry. The EPS regulatory body unveiled the new logo on its social media platforms with tagline which reads ensuring ethical advertising and marketing communications in Nigeria changing the name to change the game. President Mohamed Dubari has signed into law a bill seeking to allow the Advertising Regulatory Agency to operate as the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria, Alcon, in line with its mandate to ensure strict adherence to ethical standards and practices of the advertising profession. Globacom, a leading Nigerian telecommunications company, is set to mark 19 years of impactful existence in the country on August 29, 2022. The telecom company, which came into the country two years after other GSM companies, has over the years demonstrated deep understanding of its target audience by birthing disruptive and innovative solutions that meet their needs. As a consumer-centric brand, Glow was the first company to launch operations on per second billing and enabled more Nigerians access telco services by crashing the price of SIM cards. The company recorded another milestone as the first network in Nigeria to launch the 2.5 gig GPRS technology, thus enabling multimedia convergence and was the first company to launch nationwide 4G technology in Nigeria. In 19 years, the company has emerged the biggest promoter of African football. For many years, it sponsored the Premier League, the Super Eagles and the NFF as well as other national teams, the Supporters Club, Glow Calf Awards and Glow Soccer Academy, amongst others. Lagos State Government has concluded plans to organize the 2022 Edibeti Economic Summit on 11 and 12 October 2022 as part of initiative to drive the mega city agenda of the state. The summit with the theme Lagos 2022 to 2052 charting the path to sustainable socioeconomic growth. The future is a hope we all have will be attended by corporate players, public service officials, and trade missions, and will also launch a 30-year development plan for the state. According to the Commissioner, Lagos State Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget, the Lagos Development Plan 2022-2052 to 2052 
which will be launched alongside the summit, will be an all-encompassing master plan that clearly articulates initiatives that will drive Lagos' ambition to become Africa's model megacity, a global economic and financial hub that is safe, secured, functional, and productive. Consumer Value Broadcasting Limited, an independent broadcast organization committed to the protection of consumer rights, has announced that the maiden edition of its Value Awards has been endorsed by two industry regulators. According to the co-founder Akonte Akine, representatives of the two agencies confirmed attendance of the Consumer Value Awards scheduled to hold on the 24th August 2022. The event will host Dr. Lekon Fadalako, Registrar of the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria, Alcon, and Suzanne Oonka, Head of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council, who will be representing the Executive Vice Chairman and the Chief Executive Officer of the agency. With well, our brand news, Nest is branding forecasts after this break. <laughs> Oh, I see this collab with the suit there. Blue scatter. <laughs> Guy, give me small in your number now. Uh, romance without finance now, annoyance. Better give me bullet. Yeah, hey. hey, give me the number. Oh, yeah, judge the number down. 005. Uh -huh. ha. Where the complete number? This so always so hot, like the blessed are going to need juice, so just like juices. Hey, oh, yeah, give me last numbers. My five password. Four and a you owe me. <laughs> oh, yeah, seven, six, five, zero. Uh -huh. hey. What's you? What's you? It's my new hello, all right? Ooh, what you? What, gang? Guys, your first collab was on the train, though. You know? Find your first. Choose a social data bundle that suits your style. Dial star triple seven hash glow unlimited. Marketing Edge on TV. Promoting the bright idea. Now on branding focus. Mentiverse is a generic term for experiences that go beyond the physical through connected virtual worlds, offering new ways for people to communicate and interact. There are reports that it is in its earlier stages of its development and could be years or even decades away from being used to its full potential. Basically, the key technologies that represent the building blocks of Mentiverse have actually been around for some time. The crucial added element in the new reality is that users don't have to do it alone. They can talk to and play alongside friends and strangers alike to their heart's content. Interest in the Mentiverse is expanding at an astronomical speed even as tech behemoths like Microsoft reportedly bid £50 billion for video game maker Activision Blizzard. Microsoft correctly identified gaming as a key foundation for Mentiverse platforms and it's just the latest move among technology experts that are keen to make the most of the opportunity. It would be recalled that Facebook also strategically rebranded its present company as Menta, seemingly staking future growth on grabbing the big share of the space. However, Sir Martin Sorel, ad industry icon, recently unveiled S4S Venture, a VC fund targeting early-stage companies with interest that include exploring commercial models within the Mentiverse. The facilitation of communication and pet-to-pet -pet engagement is at the heart of the Mentiverse. At present, there are no rules. Mentiverse can truly be whatever anybody thinks it is, and people can do as they please. It's essentially an undefined space, one that is building its own communities, and taking the communication concept of Messenger to a far higher level. While the physical world is built with boundaries, Mentiverse offers freedom in the shape of a new level of reality. Virtual reality, VR, has a role to play in the Mentiverse, of course, and is already been unnessed by the likes of travel brands keen to instantly transport people to desirable destinations. But augmented reality, AR, it's likely to be the technology that really makes interest in the Metaverse take off. With AR, once tech companies like Apple get their acts together and finally launch glasses, 
that allow the wearer to experience a blend of physical and virtual reality, users can take to the streets in everyday trainers, but proudly show off to passerby in metaverse. This boundless freedom of expression is perhaps its greatest promise. With our branding focus, Nest is industry conversation where we have interactions with distinguished personalities who have made great impact in the business of brand management. Well, this week we will be continuing on the conversation we started last week with the president of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, Triple N, Mr. Steve Babayeko, who is also the Chief Executive Officer of Estrum Ideas. After this break. With another banger. This one, now barricaded 10 times. Enjoy 10 times of every candy to be safe. You recharge. You go to get up to double your data recharge. It's for new and existing growth customers. New customers go get extra one task. Bonus credit. So get your new growth in today. That's a 777 hash. Marketing Edge on TV. Promoting the bright idea. Um, are there new challenges that um, practitioners, you know, agencies are having to grapple with? Yeah, sure. I mean, every day you face challenges. I've always said that one of the biggest challenges confronting almost any SME in this country today will be infrastructural challenge. Let's start from power. Mm -hmm. Every agency, I mean, agencies fall, most of us fall within the SME space. And just power to just run your operation in a day if you see the cost at the end of the day, I do my monthly financial report with a uh, uh, finance director. It's horrifying the numbers you see. Just diesel cost has gone up. Now to power generator, now you have like about two gen generator set. One is back up to the other. So both generators are back up to the main uh, power, <laughs> power grid. So, I mean, all of that is enough to actually really, really kill your enthusiasm for business. It's just that for a lot of us, this is our destiny. We are passionate about creating jobs and, and building uh, businesses. So that's one. Two, the, the state of the country at the moment, now you have human capital issues. You train young people, uh, hoping that they can at least work for another two, three years. But next tomorrow, they are on their way to Canada or somewhere mm -hmm. else because uh, they just, and you, you really can't blame them because they just feel that the country is not conducive enough. So all of those challenges, uh, increasing by the day, not to now make matters worse, the, the, the state of insecurity in the country. So all of those things have a very direct way of impacting negatively on businesses. And those are the things we've been grappling with for a while now. And um, the impact is having on the ease of doing business in Nigeria is so overwhelming. Of course. And um, you see that some businesses are beginning to up for having to move the businesses outside the country. Of course. You know, to neighboring countries because of, you know, access to power and um, other amenities. And, and it's just a shame because Nigeria is such a beautiful country. I love this country with all my soul, with all my being. This is the only country that I have, you know. And as much as we really want to be patriotic and say all the nice things, but these are the obvious challenges that we contend with every day as business people, you know. And we're hoping that one of these days we'll be able to find answers to, the, to them. Hopefully. Yeah, so the next question would be, uh, what would be your assessment of the client and agency relationship? Um, sadly, you didn't mention inflationary pressures that of course, we're beginning to see. Sure. And uh, you know, it has a way of impacting on how much clients can you know, carry in terms of you know, um, budget and allocation for marketing campaigns. Yeah. So how would you assess the, the relationship between clients and agencies in the event of these you know, increase? I, th I think this is a time where client and agencies need, need to be best friend because, I mean, all of the things that are impacting on the client's business also affect the, the agency team as well. You know, you're talking about a uh, high cost of prices and uh, uh, heaven-bound inflationary trend. The, the, we are all in the same boat here. So I think this is the time. And the people, the only people who are going to win in the long run, in mid to long term, are the agency and the client team who are able to sit together and work as a team to work our way out of this very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think those days of, oh, we are clients, you guys are agencies, are gone because mm -hmm. unless you are able to sit at the same table and discuss 
common challenges and find common solution, uh, I don't see any uh, any any light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm beginning to see that clients too understand this, and they are beginning to come to the table and pull their agencies even closer than than, than usual. Okay. Yeah. So this is a point I would say another congratulations to you, um, you. for being re-elected as the AAAN president. In mm -hmm. fact, the entire member of your team yeah. were also re-elected. Yeah. And that's a good sign. So tell me, or rather, alight some of your achievements in the past administration. Well, I mean, just to... Year. Yeah, just to also uh, throw more light on your line of questioning. I think it's the first time, if I'm not mistaken, the history, in the almost 50 years history of the association where the president and the entire school will be re-elected on a post, mm. you know. So uh, I feel very humbled and privileged by it. I mean, uh, again, everything we've done is just to see unity in progress. That's how I describe it in the past two years because I have a very uh, experienced and very robust board and they came to the table with a lot of enthusiasm to make sure that we push the envelope and we move the association forward. So. Uh, I mean, I can't begin to name my team one by one, but they know themselves. It's been an amazing team. And that's why I went to the board of trustees and I told the association, if I have, to, if you really, if you want me to do this again, I'd rather come to the table with the same team because like mm -hmm. they say, you don't change your winning team, right? That's so I, I think that's fantastic. All of the things we've done is you see, you can clearly see, uh, if you go to the secretariat in the past two years, We've given that place a major facelift just to just to make it look good. I mean, to attract the kind of quality young agencies and young people we we, we seek to uh, to attract, we must make that place really, really nice and hospitable and welcoming for them, which we have done. Uh, a lot of personal donations from the board and from the members of the association went into uh, renovating the, the secretariat. That's one. Two. Uh, part of my campaign promise was to be able to increase uh, the percentage of women, especially on the board. I think we were able to raise that stake. I, I think we have one more woman, woman join us on the board because, see, people just misunderstand the issue of women and how the contribution they bring to the table, especially in a very patriarchal society like ours. Uh, the, every organization that makes it difficult for women to come to the table also makes it difficult for themselves to progress because women are not, it's not even the tokenism of saying, let's have one more woman. No, it's the fact that you recognize that women have a unique and very, very uh, important perspective that they bring to, to discourse and to, to, to leadership. Uh, why are you going to deny yourself of that opportunity to be able to, to tap into, into that wealth of experience, which is what we've done? And uh, we went even further than that. We partnered with UN Women uh, and we... We, uh, the Triple N became like uh, an official partner with uh, on Stereotype Alliance, mm -hmm. which is uh, the the objective of that association is to fight against gender stereotype, especially against women in advertising and any, every form of communication. So we're, we're a signatory now. We signed up to that. You see what we're doing with young agencies, trying to bring more younger agencies to be part of our, our table and groom the next level of leadership for the association. We did a lot of that. Um, a, a lot of stuff that we really have done, you know, that uh, we believe uh, we're just privileged to be able to just build off and stand on the shoulders of giants like Sir Steve Omojafo, uh Dr. Biodi Shobanjo, Mrs. Bola Thomas, and uh, Lulu Akiumi, and so many other great people who have been presidents of this association in the past, uh, just to help uh, move the conversation forward and hopefully uh, by the time we hit 50 years as an association in 2023, we'll all look back and say we've come a long way. Nice one. Um, I also know that you did something in the areas of um, mentoring. Absolutely. You visited some universities. Can you? University of Ibadan, we did that. With, we've just introduced that uh, last year now. For every AGM we have, if there's any uh, tertiary institution around uh, the venue of our AGM, we'll visit and do some kind of. Uh, mentoring program with their communication department. We did that with the University of Ibadan, and this year it was a turn of uh, Pan Atlantic University. Mm -hmm. They were very welcoming, and the hospitality was great. quite great. You know, we had a great time. Okay, so give us a hint on what we should expect from your team. 
you know, well, this I, new mandate? I, th I think there's so much that we can do. I mean, we've done a lot already, but like they say, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. So we know we can all, always just improve. One, in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion, DE and I, we really want to do a lot more. That is even bring more women. Now, beyond even just the board of the association, how can we raise the stakes for women to be able to occupy their rightful position in the leadership of the different agencies? We really want to be deliberate about pushing that agenda. Mm -hmm. And that's one. Again, to, to open our arms to young agencies, especially practitioners on the fringes of our, of our association. Please come on in. There are certain criteria we want you to fulfill so that we make sure that you are a well-structured business and all of that. Come talk to us at the sector that let us uh, register you because, I mean, the way the law is coming, once the APCON law becomes effective, which will be soon enough, uh, the entry barrier will be higher, you know. So this is the right time for people to come and join us. We really want to do more in that area. Again, building the next level of leadership. I mean, the thing is, uh, the Chinese will say the best time to plant a tree uh, was 25 years ago. The next best time to plant a tree is right now. So for us is that we've done well with our leadership of the association in the past two years. In the next two years, we take us to four years. This is the time to start planning for succession uh, for us so that we will make sure that the next uh, generation of leaders that take over from us will even be prepared to even do greater things than we have done. So a lot of those things will form uh, the bedrock of our activities in the next two years. Well said. Highly commendable. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you. Um, the annual congress I held in Ekbe, yes, you know, had a theme, technology, the new world order, technology mm -hmm. as a game changer. Mm -hmm. How does this theme, you know, aligns with your vision for the association? Well, a part of our vision is, and, and you could see if you, uh, unfortunately, you, you weren't there. If you've seen the organization of the of the AGM this year, it was, we had some, we deployed a lot of low tech, you know. So we, that, that was, the, it will probably be going history as the first AGM that not one single shred of paper was printed, which mm -hmm. is good for the environment. That's but good. most importantly, just to help us uh, accentuate the theme of the Congress. If you look at it, I mean, it's not so hard to, to, to decipher why we chose that theme. Technology has disrupted almost every field of human endeavor in the past, uh, in the recent past. Of course, it did not spare the advertising industry. And we know that for us to be able to go forward, uh, I, I normally tell my team, technology is, in, is the bigger wings that creativity needs, needs to fly even higher. Mm -hmm. So we understand this and we know that for our people, we need to embrace technology more, which is why we chose the theme. And uh, we're happy at the, the, the justice that the panelists and the discussant did to it. And the Honorable Minister of Information, Elijah Jilai Mohamed, uh, graced us with his presence uh, on Saturday. And he also presented a very incisive paper on the same topic, which we totally appreciate. Okay, can you just hint on the lessons, the, you know, the outcome. Well, the outcome is that, look, as an industry, we need to really, really embrace technology to be able to propel all our ideas even further. Uh, we need that uh, to help us be able to mitigate against some of the uh, little challenges we're facing. Technology, what technology does is that it helps you achieve all of the things that we normally would strive to achieve as human beings. It helps you achieve them faster with minimal error and at lesser cost. So if you are able to take that into account, you see how it can be beneficial to, to, to the industry uh, as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like you to tell us um, the latest on your plans to provide professional indemnity yeah, insurance for members. Well, I mean, it's something that is long overdue. Uh, you see some of our members, maybe uh, they take a job from a client. Maybe, let's say in the good old days when we see agencies used to do a lot of printing for clients. For some human error, there is a typographical error in a print, and you've done a bulk run of maybe 25,000 copies. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the client will tell you it's your fault, so you have you to be responsible course. and you have to pay for it. Uh, we, we think that if we have an insurance in place that's able to indemnify our members, it's a great thing. So we're really, really working on that now to make sure that uh, every member will be indemnified to the tune of $5 million. Uh, you know, for every fiscal year. And then the first premium for for that insurance policy 
the association had decided to bear that cost mm. just to get our people to get used to those kind of benefit and just as a value add to some of our fully paid up members, you know, and uh, we're really, really excited about that. All um, right, so tell us the legacy you would like to leave behind. I want to be remembered as a guy who opened doors for younger people to be able to pass through. I want to, to be remembered for the guy who fought for to 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 back up the fact that that of what I know in my heart that women really have a lot to contribute, and who fought with every last breath in his body to make sure that women come to their own wherever it is that I'm present. Mm. If you come to my organization when we needed to send somebody to uh, to uh, uh, one of the South African countries, uh, Zambia, uh, to set up the Zambian office. I told my, my leadership team and the board, I said, sometimes the best man for the job is a woman. We sent Adenike Odutola there, and she's done an amazing job in three to four years and grown the business fantastically well. So uh, I, I always root for women, because not because it's the in thing to do, because I just am convinced in my heart that they have a lot to bring to the table. Well, thank you so much, Sam, thank for you. your time. I thank wish you. we had more time to have this conversation. Thank you so much. Um, I hope to have future conversations with you if you will let us. I, I look forward to that as, as much. much as time will promise, yes. Thank you so much, Bye, thank you. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. But that's the much we can take on Marketing Edge on TV. Do well to join us same time next week for another interesting time. I'm Ogali Abdikele Mafru. Monkeypox is caused by a virus of same name that is closely related to now eradicated smallpox. The likely symptoms of monkeypox are fever, headache, muscle aches, back pain, low energy, rash, swollen lymph nodes, among others. How does the monkeypox virus get spread? You can get the virus through close contact with an infected person and also through physical contact with an infected animal. To get monkeypox treatment, you need to see a physician. Here are the steps to protect yourself from monkeypox virus. Step one, avoid close contact with suspected or confirmed monkeypox cases. Step two, avoid physical touch with animals who could be infected. Step three, frequently clean and disinfect environments that could have been contaminated. We all need to join hands together to protect ourselves from this virus. This campaign is brought to you by TVC Communication. Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective. Covering every human angle. I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want to watch. The story of sport is often told in numbers. But we don't fall in love with 14091. We don't idolize a sixth round knockout. We don't dream of growing up to be 3 1. Discover the human stories that give meaning to the numbers. Sport Africa from the BBC. our home threatened by man's activities with fears of mass extinction on the rise on green angle we examine the issues that affect our environment seek solutions to put us on track to secure and restore a cleaner and greener world for generations to come
at TVC News. Wherever the big news story is happening, we're